um, Oklahoma Elementary. I currently serve on the SPDM at Carter Traditional where I have learned to review budgets, um, program review, pursue rich curriculum for our students, and also to encourage teachers in professional development. I, have served, I serve on three uh, statewide committees and one of them has um, really been helpful to me talking with the mayors. But one of the things that has helped me in my pursuit of um, helping out is in those committees, I have been able to uh, develop relationships with legislators um, in the statewide, uh, the statewide system and also in the federal system as well. So I have already some relationships with legislators and feel very comfortable talking to them. And most of all, I'm a parent with two children and I am concerned and want to make sure that my children and your children have a bright future. Thank you to our candidates from District 4. And uh, Mr. White, you should see about 500 people walked in during the debate. <laughs> be amazed by the crowd here. <laughs> Thank you, thanks for your time. And we'll have District uh, 7 coming up at 8 o'clock. We have about a 13-minute uh, break. Thank you very much. Sherry Dimer. I'm the District PTA President here in Jefferson County. We are so happy to be able to sponsor this candidates forum tonight to help you become more informed and more familiar with these candidates for District 7. Uh, District PTA does not endorse any candidates. I'd like to just say we have two of our board members, Susan and Richard Gardner, our timekeepers in the back, and two of our district board members are reviewing questions, Teresa Mayfield and Heather Wong. And tonight, our moderator is Joe Arnold from WHAS 11 TV. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I got a reminder, if you have any questions that you'd like to ask, uh, feel free to fill those out. And you'll be able to raise your hand in the back here, and they can, uh, they can go to your seat, or they can also give you the cards to fill those out. We do have some questions that have been asked prior that I'll be using uh, throughout the debate here. Uh, a reminder also to turn your cell phones off, put them on vibrate if you want mine during the debate. Welcome, uh, gentlemen. I don't think Mr. Phil has made it, so we will, uh, we will, we will commence uh, without him for right now. I'm going to start with um, the media recently has, was chastised by one board member in an op-ed in the Kirker Journal for saying that uh, too much attention has been paid to the student assignment plan in uh, this race. And my question for each of you is, uh, to what extent is changing the student assignment plan or addressing it a priority to you in this race? Is it your number one priority? Where does it fit in? If it's not your number one priority, then, then what is? I'm going to start on the opposite end with Mr. Bell. We'll come this way for our first statement, Mr. Bell. Whether the student assignment plan is a priority or not. Okay. Um, the, um, based on where I sit, uh, the board with their action and uh, earlier this year when they changed the current student, uh, current student assignment plan from the six cluster plan to the 13 cluster plan made the right decision and made a decision respecting our neighborhoods uh, in the Louisville community and is a great deal uh, more respectful of the neighborhoods. Um, so I, I guess I would say the student assignment plan, uh, we need to look at the data. Um, uh, one of the things that uh, you'll hear from me often is let's look at the data and see how it's impacting student achievement. And because student achievement is our number one goal, and uh, I think the current student assignment plan with 13 clusters probably does a much better job of respecting our neighborhoods, respects diversity, and will continue diversity. Um, and uh, it was a, was a good decision, and I'd be very supportive of that. Mr. Brady? Well, my first priority will be student achievement. Uh, I think that we have to address what's going on in our schools. We have to address mm -hmm. the fact that we need to make sure that our students are prepared for college or prepared for a career when they graduate. That is my first priority. As well. In regards to neighborhood schools versus uh, the assignment plan, uh, I don't support the current six cluster assignment plan. We are Thankfully, we are changing that. Uh, the current plan has just put kids on the bus for way, way too long. Um, and thankfully, the 13 cluster assignment plan will be neighborhood focused. It will be able 
to uh, reduce those ride times, uh, eventually eliminate bus depots, and also, uh, as uh, as previously mentioned, still meets JCPS go JCPS's goals for uh, diversity standards, which I think that we have uh, made great strides as a community to have a diverse learning environment. Uh, but it, more so than any of that, it also maintains parental choice. And that's something as, uh, for me as a parent of two JCPS students, I like to be able to have the choice of schools to be able to send my children to. Uh, I think that we offer a wealth of different uh, teaching methods. And uh, for me as a parent, with my two children, I know how they learn. I know them better than anyone else. And I like to be able to have the ultimate uh, decision as to where they go to school. And having that six or 13 cluster assignment plan and the choice of schools to choose from that are relatively uh, close to the house, it, I think is the ideal best of both worlds uh, solution. Mr. Robertson. I am for neighborhood schools. And I think that that is a key component to the way we should educate our children. And the reason being is because like with my wife and I, we've been always involved with our children in their schooling. We have, uh, my wife was at the, uh, she was at the PTA at Tully Elementary with our kids. My wife was there so much they thought she worked there. They, um, they always were asking her, so do you work here? And, and she, no, she volunteered, but she spent a lot of time in the school. In fact, when my kids were older, when they got to middle school, they kind of missed having mom and dad kind of hanging around there. I think that that is a key component in education. Because ultimately, who's responsible for our children? We are as parents. The parents are the most important factor as far as I'm concerned. Uh, parent involvement only can happen at a neighborhood level as far as I'm concerned. I do like parental choice. I believe that you should have the choice to send a child where you want to send them in the school system uh, for various reasons, whether it be for a magnet program or traditional program, whatever the case may be. Um, I just feel that, that the neighborhood schools will be um, more conducive to learning for our children because the, the parents can be more involved with what their children are doing. Mr. Sexton. Having spent uh, 43 years in two neighborhood high schools, uh, I can tell you that uh, it works. Uh, Jefferson Town and uh, Eastern are really uh, neighborhood schools. All students that wish to go to those schools uh, were allowed to attend. Uh, the predictability of people moving into our community is, is difficult right now, and a lot of people have left our community uh, because they couldn't uh, find which school they might be attending until late in the month or late before school starts. So maybe they didn't buy a home or maybe they didn't build a home and they moved to another county or they decided to send their son or daughter to a private or parochial or a charter school. Uh, there are a lot of options in Jefferson County. We have some great choices, but I think that uh, no uh, first, second, or third grade uh, student especially should be forced to uh, travel for 40 or 45 minutes on a bus. That The parent should have a guaranteed seat in their neighborhood school or the school nearest to them for their sons and daughters. If they choose to go some other location, so be it. But they should be guaranteed that seat. Otherwise, we're gonna to continue to have a talent drain in uh, Jefferson County to the other surrounding counties. They're, they're having a boom town in Shelby and Oldham County. The growth is phenomenal because our schools are not predictable. We don't know where our kids are gonna to go to school until late August, or not late August, but a couple weeks before school starts. And having me as a moderator has been a great test for our candidates of being able to deal with the unpredictable because I jumped to our first question without our opening statements. <laughs> so I, so in, in, in the, uh, uh, you no, one, no one did challenge me, so I appreciate I expect each of you, when we show up with a microphone in hand, not to challenge me on interviewing you either when, once you're elected. <laughs> so but I do want to give the opportunity because I, I went to that first question of what the media's been talking about, and I'd like to start again on the end with Mr. Bell and come back around with one minute this time for the opening statement to make sure that I'm giving you the opportunity to be able to lay out what you think as opposed to me setting the agenda. I'll do that later. Mr. Bell. You caught me off guard, I'll be honest with, with, with the first question, because My I thought it was an opening statement. It's, uh, we participated in another forum like this. They said they were gonna ask three questions. We got in the room number five, so we ended up sitting for a little bit longer than what we anticipated. But 
in terms of an opening statement, um, um, looking out here, most in the room know me. Uh, I've worked for the Jefferson County Public Schools for 22 years. I'm a former teacher. I'm a former administrator. I worked for the Jefferson County Teachers Association. I worked for Humana when they had hospitals. And I think I have a great deal of education and business experience um, that I can use as an asset serving on the Board of Education. I've never run for any political office, never intended to run for any political office, but since this community has invested so much in me in the education arena, and uh, since I'm now fully retired, as you can see, casual, retired, don't have far coat and tie, I need to stop, but I figured I would offer myself up front for the school board and provide some assistance in that area. Mr. Brady. Well, good evening. Hi. Uh, <laughs> my name is Chris Brady. I'm running for school board here in District 7. For those of you who don't know, District 7 it takes in basically Southeast Jefferson County and runs its way up through Middletown and all the way over to uh, parts of, uh, well, just beyond the Poloville. So it's a fairly large area. Um, I'm a Louisville native. I uh, was born here and went to my first school was Kingwood Elementary. And after my parents divorced, I ended up moving down to Hardin County, and I'm a product of the Hardin County Public School System, so I'm a graduate from West Hardin. Um, after graduating from the Western Kentucky University, I came back to Louisville and was lucky enough to meet my wife, Deanna, and we've been married for almost 10 years. I remember October 27th. Uh, otherwise, uh, this will be, I, I won't be a candidate for very long. Um, so, uh, we're very fortunate to meet her, and we have uh, been very, also very blessed to have two kids, uh, two sons that I had in uh, the JCPS school system. So I have a vested interest in what's going on here. Um, by trade, I'm a, nor I'm a trainer for Norton Healthcare, and I've also had experience within the classroom as a JCPS substitute teacher, as well as a teacher for IUS. And uh, apparently I thought I had two minutes, but that's okay. You have a good one minute for the opening statement, we'll, we'll which came that. after the first question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have a scorecard here, I'm sure. Mr. Robertson, one minute. Jonathan Robertson is my name. And uh, actually, thank you for reminding me about anniversaries. Tomorrow is my wife and mine's uh, our 19th anniversary. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, uh, it's been a great time. It's been a good time. So anyway, <coughs> we are, uh, my wife and I have been, like I said earlier, heavily involved with our children and their education. Uh, I am, uh, I'm a computer guy and a, a phone, I do phone systems and computers. I uh, solve problems for people on a regular basis. I'm not an educator, um, but I believe I bring a new, fresh perspective to, uh, to things. Whenever I look at things, I look at them in a different light. Uh, that's what I have to do every day in my business. And I have to bring solutions to businesses and to help them run more efficiently. efficiently. So I would like to bring that same efficiency and fresh perspective to the school board. Um, oh, and also, I graduated from Jaytown High School under uh, Jim Sexton here, <laughs> and I uh, went to the University of Louisville, and I have a degree in finance. My name is James Sexton, and we're real proud of Jonathan. <laughs> he hasn't purchased his brick yet from Jaytown Hall. I don't have all the money you have. Uh, <laughs> I've been in the business a long time. I'm Henry Tarpon. CPS. Uh, I'm still a principal. I work in another district across the river. I just can't quit. I love education. Uh, I know what it takes to have good, strong schools, good, safe schools, and I want to be part of making the change. I think I have some good ideas to make the change here in uh, Jefferson County. We have a, about uh, 10 high schools that are suffering. We have about 10 middle schools that are suffering according to the state standards. And it's unfortunate that we can't bring them out of uh, the low ebb that they're in and the respect that the communities uh, need to have for them. So I'd like to work on that. I certainly advocate no new taxes in the school, and I will pledge no new taxes, and I will work for neighborhood schools. I'd like to do one follow-up on neighborhood schools and student assignment. We're going to start on this end this time and then move the, the opposite direction. And perhaps it's appropriate because I think the more of the neighborhood schools advocates are on this end. My question for you is, how do you make that work, given the constraints of the current physical plant, uh, resources that are in place? What do you do away with to be able to bring neighborhood schools back? We'll start with Mr. Sexton. Well, you have to create a holding power in the, in the the school that you're working with, 